Are these toys or decorations, these tiny little teapots? No, they're actually exactly the opposite. They're the most specific tool for brewing tea. Like a diamond, each one of these is unique and has its own character. In today's video, we're gonna talk about the rise of flash brewing, why you would use one of these, what to look for in your first teapot, and then a journey to getting a teapot if a teapot is just a little bit out of your price range to start. See, flash brewing started in a little southeastern city called Chaojo. Now in Chaojo, they're most famous for their juni, which is a cinnabar colored clay. And they would use tea boats like this one with three or four cups and a small gaiwan originally. But see, Chaojo Chaojo-style gongfu tea became popular, and then it went to Taiwan, where this was invented, the gongdao bei, or pour cup. But what was so special about this Chaojo style of brewing? Well, these flash teeps were very, very short infusions with a large amount of leaves and a little amount of water, creating room for smaller gaiwans and smaller teapots. These gaiwans, teapots, pour cups, fragrance cups, all led to the art of tea. Not a tea ceremony, but a tea practice, somewhat ritualistic in nature where you're focused on the experience of drinking tea. While Chaozhou may be the home of flash brewing and gongfu style tea, it was really the invention of this guy, the pour cup, that made gongfu tea so different than any other type of tea. Because in every other city besides Chaozhou, they didn't just pour in a tea boat. With this, we could stop the steep of tea and not have to just pour it directly into cups, which led to the rise of puar. But these teas were extremely potent. And so the design of the Gongdao Bay allowed for you to stop the steeping process at very exact points. But really the main fun of flash brewing isn't using one of these, it's using one of these. Pouring with these little gongfu teapots in and of themselves is an experience. The warmth of the pot, the feel of the clay. And so the nice thing is we get to do it over and over and over again because you're brewing several times when you're flash steeping. When you're looking for your first teapot, the first thing that I think people overlook a lot of times is the size of the pot. This honestly is even a little bit big because most people who are brewing tea gongfu style are brewing by themselves. However, the recommended size I would say is between one and 200 milliliters. But really, if you really wanna get specific, I think 130 to 180 is really your kind of crucial best practice. When you're building your tea setup out, you're gonna be picking a pour cup. And most pour cups can't hold more than 200 milliliters. The 150 milliliter teapot is also perfect for brewing by yourself or with friends. The second thing you wanna look for is a pot that's easy to clean. Some people might say this is semantics and it's a little bit silly to really worry about, but for me, for new gongfu tea drinkers, you don't want anything to get in the way of the ability for you just to enjoy high quality tea. And the reality is, if you have to spend more time trying to take out your leaves with a small lidded pot like this one, you're less likely to keep brewing. Whereas if you have a more barrel open shape pot like this one, or this one, you're gonna be more likely to keep brewing tea gongfu style. Now, I'm not saying that that should be the case for every single teapot, but again, for your first one, get one that's easy to clean out. This is probably my favorite and most important point, the pour test. If your pot pours the way that you want it to. Now, some people think that a pot is supposed to have this glass rod, very even pour, and you can have that, but it's not the only way for a teapot to pour. You just wanna see, do you like the way that the pot pours? Does it feel good when you're pouring it? If you're just getting your first teapot, it doesn't matter if it's from Yixing or Chaozhou or Jianshui or Jingdezhen, that stuff doesn't matter. What matters is it's a good quality pot that you like and you'll actually use. For the recommended cost for a first teapot, we'll talk about that later in the video when we get to the journey. Why would you actually use one of these pots? It seems like a lot of work, right? Well, it depends on how you're viewing drinking tea. If all you've ever had is some Southern style sweet tea, this setup may seem a little bit silly to you, but much like going out to the bar or going to hang out with your friends is an experience, so is this. And it's an alternative experience where people can sit down and enjoy each other's presence. And this is something you can't say about every hobby. A lot of hobbies, the hobby itself sits at the forefront. But the nice thing about tea is once you get started, it can hang out in the back seat and you can enjoy tea with great company and great people. Also in today's world of social media and everything being so fast, this is a way to slow down and to have authentic, meaningful interactions with people. 
I'm a pretty pragmatic person. And so teapots to me are cool because they're the most useful, functional type of art that you could have in the world. A painting is beautiful to sit up on the wall, but when you get to hold and see the character and essence of a potter in their work in your hand, especially if you get to know them better, it's really amazing seeing all of the intentional decisions and choices that they make to make a good pot. So to be able to have the essence of an artist in a three-dimensional form that also is useful is really cool. Think of teapots as sculptures and porcelain or cups as canvases. Because most of the time when you see a teapot, the shape in and of itself means something. The sculpture bringing it together has a purpose. Whereas with porcelain and cups, you'll oftentimes see things painted on or adorned on them, and that becomes the art. All right, so the progression to buying your first teapot. How much should you pay for your first pot? Around $100. So for around $100, you should be able to get an apprentice or lower level master pot. If $100 seems like a lot and you're interested in seeing how the different clay affects the tea you're drinking, start with buying a cup. The only caveat to this is make sure that it's the same clay. A lot of times when the cups are being sold, even if it says it's the same name, I've found that when you actually get those cups in, it's a lower quality clay or a different clay with slip added to it. So just make sure they're the same type of clay like these ones. But this is gonna be a much more affordable way to get the effect you're looking for to see if you like the clay before you decide to make a purchase and get that pot. If $100 is too expensive for you for your first pot, get a Gaiwan over a mold made teapot. They pour well, the fitment is usually pretty good, but they don't have any character because they're not made by an artist. They're not made by hand. And so you don't get that, that essence and character that you get like in a handmade pot. I have a full video on why a Gaiwan is the best and most useful type of teaware, and I'll link that video above. With a cheaper Gaiwan, you're still going to get all of that functionality that you'd get in a handmade Gaiwan out the sacrifice of the character like you would with a mold-made teapot. Now, those $100 price pots, those are apprentice pots from Asia. In the West, we don't really have codified tea clays and teapot shapes like they do in China, but I would still recommend the same thing. If you're interested in an American potter's pot, and you want to see if you like the shapes, the colors, the quality that you're getting, go for a teacup or a tea bowl first because that will be a good indication of what you're going to get when you get that pot. If you want to see how every young Asian is drinking tea, it's not Gong Fu style tea, it's milk tea. But if you want to be able to brew it better than any store in the US, check out this video here.